we're joined by longtime bull Ryan Payne, president at Payne Capital Management. Uh, Ryan, it's good to see you this morning. What's your reaction to all this? Well, I like how you call me a longtime bull. I appreciate that, Kristen. Uh, I mean, this is just like, I, you know, the way I equate it to it's like a ship of fools at this point. And I don't think you can discern between a hedge fund manager and some dude or dudette sitting in a uh, Reddit chat because really, I mean, you're just seeing two enormous bets being made here. And, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about how, you know, these, I guess the, the Robin Hood crowd is kind of sticking it to Wall Street and things like that. And I appreciate that. But I think you have to remember, too, hedge funds, you know, their returns have been horrible for a very, very long time. If you look at the last decade, hedge funds have underperformed the market, the S&P 500. And really, since they couldn't, you know, trade on illegal information, which kind of stopped after the financial crisis, they've really been desperate for a trade. So all that short interest on a stock, you know, like, uh, you know, like we're seeing right now in GameStop is just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really a desperate play anyway, in my mind, from these hedge funds trying to create outperformance. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you've got this whole crowd of investors coming in, uh, betting on the stock to go up. And I just mm -hmm. think it's going to end badly for both parties. OK, so I, I do want you to break that down a little bit more because we know already, certainly for Melvin Capital, uh, this has been challenging by its own peers. It needed close to a three billion dollar bailout because of this particular trade on GameStop. But for many uh, retail investors that may be piling in or have already piled into GameStop and haven't sold their shares, how does this potentially end for them, Ryan? Because unless GameStop itself uh, sells a bunch, of, a bunch of its own shares at these levels and tries to recreate the business, uh, you and I know that these fundamentals don't add up. Yeah, the fundamentals are not pretty, right? It's kind of like the blockbuster of video games. <laughs> you know, so, and the pandemic just exacerbated that. So it just comes down to when does the market collapse? And my question you know, to all these traders that have bought this, bought options, going long on this position is when do you sell you know when's the magic day you sell and you know last time i looked in my experience on wall street is you know once the market collapse no one gives you a head you know no one gives you a heads up ahead of time to do that and invariably you get caught holding the bag mm -hmm. and retail investors are infamous for holding the bag uh, when these things do finally collapse so i don't think it's going to end well i don't have a crystal ball to tell you exactly when that date's going to be but my mind is if you've made a lot of money speculating any of these stocks. And I mean, even like Tesla is another good example of this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, I'd rather be lucky than good. Mm -hmm. And I'd appreciate here that maybe just take your profits and run because, you know, at the end of the day, like this isn't on fundamentals like you just said. And uh, by the way, Chamath Palihapitiya, who pumped this stock and basically was sticking up for the little guy. And oh, by the way, I think many people want to stick up for the little guy here or girl. Uh, but Chamath took his profits, right? So he pumped it, he took his profits, and now he's out. And, and that's why I think it's important to highlight here is that um, you might be caught on the wrong side of this trade if your true intention was to actually make money in this. And so I do want to pull up uh, one particular Reddit post, uh, Ryan, from this chat room room and show some of the motivations of these traders. Uh, one person writing, quote, GameStop is about more than just money. It's about sending a message, YOLO, for all the recessions they cause, for all the jobs and homes people have lost, for all the people that can't pay for college because minimum wage has stagnated while Wall Street gets rich, and for all the retail traders they left holding the bag for all the times they got bailed out with our tax money while we got nothing. It isn't about greed. It's about taking back what is ours, what we've already paid for. Uh, so some people in this chat, Ryan, have said it's not about gains, and that's maybe why we see that they're not selling the stock at these levels, but it's about a message. How do you interpret that? Can it truly send a message to, to Wall Street and some of the biggest hedge funds? I, know, I think it's sort of the nail in the coffin for hedge funds. It's very poetic, but I still think greed is driving this market, Kristen. Because I think it's really hard to sell when you're in it, you know, the way the, a lot of these traders are in it. I mean, if you use any of these, these apps like Robinhood, I mean, it basically is a casino. And I've made this joke with you before, like, when are they going to start offering free drinks when you open that account? It's like literally going to Atlantic City and, and betting. And, I've, you know, anecdotally, and I've spoken to a lot of investors right now that have made a lot of money. And not only GameStop, but I know, I know investors that bought Tesla back in March, and they've made literally millions of dollars, and they still won't sell. So, you know, my experience is, you know, there's an old saying, a fool and their money were lucky to get together in the first time. It's a little harsh, but I think eventually, and I remember when the tech bubble burst, no one said how they sold Apple, at the, or AOL rather, at the top and got out. 
I really think what's going to happen here is you're going to see a lot of people ride this down just like they wrote it up. Mm. And I suspect, you know, and it's not just on a moralistic cause to be buying these stocks and speculating on. Just my guess. Okay. So, a yeah, a cautionary message. Again, if you are in this stock uh, to make money, and look, we know that roughly 10 million people are still out of a job, and it's, it's a dire time. Uh, so maybe not a huge surprise that we see some of this taking place. But uh, a very controversial step here, Ryan, earlier this morning, Robinhood actually taking the move to restrict trading in some of these stocks, GameStop included. It wasn't just GameStop. It was Bed Bath & Beyond. It was BlackBerry Express, Nokia, AMC, among others. Was that the right move? I'm sure from a risk management perspective, 100 percent, right? I mean, if you have a lot of these call options outstanding um, and positions have to be covered at some point, you know, you have to make sure that your customer is good on those positions. So I'm sure they are in a nervous position here because the stock has gone up so much and there's so much leverage involved here. Um, and who knows who's shorting the stock still versus buying the stock uh, or buying the calls against the stock. So, I mean, I imagine at this point, a lot of it's risk management and Robinhood's cleaned up. You know, at the end of the day, who makes the most money in these situations? It's kind of like during the gold rush. It's who's selling the shovels. So Wall Street still does win, by the way. Maybe it's not the hedge fund managers, but those facilitating the trades like the Robin Hoods of the world, Fidelity, Schwab's, they're still going to win. So from a moralistic standpoint, you know, I hate to say it, but Wall Street's still the winner here. Sure. I'm being tough today. So, so do you, <laughs> right, do you, do you take a profit, which if you did sell right now um, and you were in this even just a day or two ago, you would make a profit or do you continue to try to send this message? We'll wait to see how it plays out. Uh, this, look, this, the stock's still up 16%, Ryan, as we're speaking here, up 830% over the last week. We got to leave it there. That's Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management. Thank you.